wait, wait, here. Go to her photos. See there? That one. Oh. From when she was in school. <laughs> oh man, is that Samantha? Yeah. I've never seen her like that. <laughs> she must have been completely wasted. <laughs> this is too good. Wait, man. wait, wait. There's more. <laughs> wait. One more. Oh man, I'll send a link to Doug. The guys upstairs need to see oh, this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Click. Sure. Sweet. Oh. Here, check this out. Whoa, is that Samantha? Yeah, Mark just posted this. How did he get these? I don't know, but he's gonna be in big trouble when she finds out. She is gonna get a ton of comments. Are you kidding? Here, let me write something. Oh. I have to. Show us more. Here we go. <laughs> we didn't know you had so much talent. <laughs> Didn't you delete this album? What album? What are you talking about? They're at it again. You better see this. No. Oh, why won't they just leave me alone? I deleted these a long time ago. They're such jerks. Oh my god, let me see. Wait, can everyone see these? Everybody in the network. I can't have management see this. I think it's too late. We've just seen an example of unwelcome sexual conduct. Whether it happens face-to-face -face or online, this kind of behavior continues to occur in our workplaces. And it's not just sexual conduct that can cause damage and distress. Today we're here to talk about sexual harassment and other types of discrimination and harassment, none of which are okay in the workplace. And we'll talk about how you personally can help contribute to an environment where people are free to do their best work without the threat of unwelcome behavior. We'll talk about federal, state, and local laws that protect our rights as individuals, and we'll take a close look at everyone's responsibility to help maintain a respectful work environment. Starting in 1964 with the Civil Rights Act, federal law protects individuals from discrimination based on their race, their color, religion, national origin, and sex. Harassment is a form of discrimination because it discourages individuals from pursuing certain job opportunities, or it makes their jobs harder, and this results in a denial of equal opportunity. Over the years, additional protected characteristics have been added by laws such as the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Age Discrimination Act, not to mention other government regulations and state and local laws. I imagine some of our viewers are probably thinking, this could get confusing, especially since laws keep getting added. Maybe we can simplify things. Right. Knowing the law is important, but the simple solution is not to focus on whether it's against the law or not. Harassment is not okay. Either way, no matter who we are, we all want to be treated with common courtesy and respect. So focus on what you have in common with your co-workers rather than what makes you different. And one thing for sure you have in common is that everybody needs to get the job done. Whether your co-workers are married or single, whether their politics and religion are the same as yours, these things have nothing to do with getting the job done. It's a free country, so treat everyone equally, rather than based on some stereotype tied to a group. Exactly. Now this next scene shows how unwelcome behavior can interfere with an individual's ability to do his job. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. They used to hire guys to do this job. It's not again. Just lay off them. You mean lay on them? <laughs> hey, where are you going so fast, homie? You looking for your boyfriend? <laughs> Here, maybe you need a cold shower. <laughs> well, apparently this is not the first time these guys have picked on their coworker. Yes, and therefore this would likely qualify as hostile work environment harassment, which is against the law. Hostile work environment harassment includes unwelcome verbal behavior, such as derogatory slurs or comments concerning an individual's race, national origin, or other protected characteristic, and visual forms of harassment, like gestures or posters, cartoons or t-shirts, or like we've just seen, physical behavior, including assault or interference with a person's work or movement. So let's take a closer look. Is it still considered harassment if the behavior is not tied to a legally protected category? Well, it may not end up in the courts, but employers want to discourage any kind of bullying or harassing behavior. It's just not good for the work group, and it should be stopped well before it crosses the line into illegal behavior. 
Still dragging that filet. Table 12. Uh, table 7 is asking for the dessert menu. What did you say? Speak up. I can't hear you. Uh, I'm sorry. I said that table 7 is asking for the dessert menu. Well, then say it right. Dessert menu. That's how we say it here. <laughs> Don't mind him, Fuzzy. He's just like that. It's, it's Fuzzy. Yeah, I know. Fuzzy. Like the bear. Fuzzy, Fuzzy, Fuzzy. <laughs> Okay, so the first waiter commenting on Fozzie's accent in a rude way certainly seemed hostile. But was it illegal? And what about intentionally mispronouncing his name like the second waiter did, not thinking how this might cause hurt feelings? In other words, how do you know when rude comments or joking around are really harassment? Well, one or two comments might not be illegal, but they can still be cluelessly insensitive. Still, you're right. In general, a comment made once or twice does not technically qualify you as a harasser. In order to be considered illegal, the behavior has to be ongoing, pervasive, or severe behavior related to a protected characteristic such as national origin, as we've just seen. It must unreasonably interfere with a person's work performance or create an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. So occasional rude comments or mean-spirited kidding around on an infrequent basis may not count but any unwelcome behavior like this hurts morale, and no one should have to put up with it. Religion is also a protected area that can be very sensitive. Now let's take a look at another scene showing discriminatory behavior among coworkers. What's the deal with Isaac? What do you mean, what's the deal? I mean, why is he over there? I just got sick of it, and I told him he can't eat with us anymore. How come? Well, you know, all this praying and stuff. I mean, it isn't Thanksgiving, it's lunch. Give me a break. Well, wait a minute, aren't you religious too? Well, yeah, sure, but a, but a normal religion. I mean, his religion doesn't even approve of what I eat. Food's food. I mean, what's the big deal? Oh, and don't even ask him about going out to have a beer with you. I don't know, man. It looks kind of uncomfortable over there. Fine. Let him stop with all this religious stuff. I can come sit with us. It's important to speak up and not go along with it if you feel a coworker is being picked on. Tell your coworkers to knock it off, or if you're not comfortable with confronting them, talk to your supervisor, HR, or anyone else in your chain of command. It's easier to stop this type of thing if you speak up before it becomes routine. So we've taken a look at several hostile work environment situations. Now let's move on to the other type of harassment called quid pro quo. I've got to show you this mess. Do you see? See what I'm talking about? Yeah, a, a janitor that can't clean up after himself? Yeah. I'll talk to the crew chief right away. Yeah, well, he's going to have to do better than this. Well, our goal is to meet your expectations in every way. Well, good. Because I've got some expectations. Considering your contract's up at the end of the month, and I don't think your boss would like it too much if I was out asking for other bids. Well, that's certainly your choice, but um, I hate to see it come to that. I would too. I really like it when you come around. What you say we go upstairs right now and work on my expectations? Or, or whatever. God. Sorry, I, I have to go. Quid pro quo means this for that. It happens when a person in a position of power or authority pressures another with sexual demands in exchange for job benefits or job security. It can occur in a person's actual place of employment or in any work-related environment. In the case we've just seen, Ron believes that Nicole's employer will want her to do whatever it takes to keep his contract. Quid pro quo harassment is considered to be so serious that even one occurrence is illegal. In the case we've just seen, Nicole's employer will certainly want to know what happens so steps can be taken to protect her from this illegal behavior. So now we've covered the two main categories of harassment, quid pro quo and hostile work environment. Now let's look into some of the finer points. The first questions we'll look at are these. Do you have to be directly involved in order to be the victim of harassment? And does the harm you cause have to be intentional in order for you to be the harasser? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
still working on that tan, Jenna. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Hey, you need some help with those straps? Think you can handle them? Oh, yeah. Oh, you better let me, I'm an expert. <laughs> so you say. Oh, I can show you a few moves. Here's a move for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing. Oh. Unbelievable. You know what? It's ridiculous. I'm out of here. Let's go. Uh-oh. Now you got us in trouble with the grandmas. Maybe they'll make us go sit in the corner together. Hey, I've been bad. Shouldn't Conduct has to be unwelcome in order to qualify as unlawful harassment. Those who enjoy wearing provocative dress and participating in flirtatious behavior may find it welcome and have no basis for a claim. But if you participate in this kind of behavior, you have to be careful. Even if you do not intend to do harm, it can escalate and lead to even worse behavior. And your coworkers can change their minds about what they find acceptable. Over time, they may come to find the behavior unwelcome, and that's when you can get into trouble. Also, as we've just seen, third-party observers can be victims of harassment. And that's why it's important to dress appropriately and act professionally while at work. After all, it's a workplace, not a social club. Exactly. In fact, several individuals in this last scene might be surprised to hear themselves called harassers. But women can harass men and other women, just as men can harass men. Similarly, members of a particular cultural or ethnic group can harass members of their own group, for example, by using stereotypical insults or slurs. So now we've talked about different forms of discrimination and harassment. Next, let's talk about employee responsibilities to prevent this from happening in their workplaces. What should you do if you are personally the target of harassing behavior? What if you are a witness? I'm going to go talk to him, Jack. That's not comfortable. You should be at the table. Yeah, but Jay's over there. It's okay. I'll eat here. What? You can't eat at the table because Jay says so? He's full of it. I'm not looking for trouble. Listen, if he doesn't want to eat with the two of us, then he can eat. Come on. It'll be fun. Sometimes all it takes is one person showing a little leadership and doing the right thing, and others will follow suit. That's right. Usually co-workers will stop their unwelcome behavior if you simply ask them to. But if you feel uncomfortable speaking to them directly, then by all means don't hesitate to ask someone else to step in. Make sure that you are aware of the complaint procedures in your particular workplace. Kathy, come on in. Generally, it's hey, best to start with your supervisor or manager. Or if you would feel more comfortable, talk to HR or anyone else in your chain of command. I was hoping that you could talk to some of the people in this department and get them to act like grown-ups. I'm sorry to hear you sound so upset. Why don't you tell me what's going on? Well, it's not like they're harassing me exactly, but it really makes me uncomfortable the way they talk to each other. It's just that this is all public. They don't keep it private at all. Remember that you have a responsibility to inform your employer about illegal behavior at work. It's fine to talk to your coworkers and try to make the situation better on your own, but if they don't listen to you and don't change their behavior, then be sure to get help sooner rather than later. Hey, Vince. Oh, uh, you're leaving. I'll just catch you another time. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Not really. Okay, you know what? I can say a few minutes, so, um... Come on in. Employers want to know about it when you think harassment is going on. They want to take steps to protect everyone and make sure it doesn't happen again. So what's up? <sighs> listen, I'm not sure if this is a big deal or not, but I just didn't think the other guys would listen to me. Listen to you about what? They just keep giving Mateo such a hard time. By getting help, you contribute to a more friendly and enjoyable workplace. For you, and for everybody else. But lately, they've just been pretty rough on him. Now, sometimes people are reluctant to report harassment because they're concerned about being retaliated against. But it's important to know that retaliation is also against the law. Let's take a look. Well, just because some people like to throw their weight around, go running to the boss and make stuff up just to get everyone else in trouble. I mean, not everybody's a team player. And if you don't want to be a part of the team, fine. You're on your own. Good luck if you ever need help with anything. So what would you call this? Simply letting off steam? 
Would you go so far as to call this retaliation? Yes, absolutely. Behavior such as turning a cold shoulder, spreading rumors, or avoiding someone who refuses to go along with offensive behavior is definitely a form of retaliation. No matter what form it takes, retaliation is against the law. It discourages an employee's right to speak up. It also has a chilling effect on others who observe any negative consequences for speaking up and then become reluctant to do so themselves. Hey you guys, thank you for coming today. I want you to listen closely because I want to be perfectly clear about this. Now, you've already had training on discrimination and harassment. You've also had training on retaliation. I want to remind you again that retaliation is against the law and it's against our policies. Now, after a complaint, I don't expect you to be best friends, but you do have to be cordial and polite it's not okay to refuse to speak to each other or spread rumors or false accusations. Keep your focus on your work and keep your interactions neutral, civil, and job related. And that means with everyone. You'd be surprised at how relationships can improve if you just start out by being courteous. We should mention here that legality is again only part of the picture. Even if it weren't against the law, retaliation should be stopped. It's a form of bullying, and it hurts people. And knowing that you will be protected from retaliation should make it easier for you to do your part in making your workplace better for everyone. That's right. It takes courage. But when you speak up or make a complaint, you're actually helping the people who caused the problem. Maybe they'll change their behavior before it leads to more serious problems and potentially more serious discipline. And this gives your employer an opportunity to fix something they may not even know is occurring. How's it going? Okay. I think I have a solution. I'm giving Jack the 4th Street account. He can deal with Ron. Oh, wow. Thanks. That would be great. But um, does that mean... No. No decrease in your pay. You always wanted the West Side building. It's yours. I already let them know over there. Okay. Wow. Great. Closer to home, too. I'm glad you told me so I could do something about it. Yeah. Me, too. You keep up the good work. I will. Now let's review what we've covered here today. The opportunities for bullying and harassment have unfortunately increased with the growth of social media. With the almost universal presence of cell phones, laptops, and other electronic devices, you need to think carefully about how certain activities that you participate in on your own time might spill over into your workplace. Harassment is a form of discrimination because it discourages protected groups from pursuing certain job opportunities or it makes their jobs harder. This results in a denial of equal opportunity. Don't participate in harassing behaviors or bring potentially offensive items into the workplace. If someone sends you an offensive email, don't forward it to anyone, even if you're pretty sure they'll like it. Emails, comments, and photos you post online can gain a life of their own and come back to haunt you. People are complicated, and workplace relationships can be complicated too, especially in today's more diverse workforce. But in spite of our differences, it's still possible to contribute to a work environment that is free from harassment, discrimination, and retaliation. This kind of workplace is more pleasant for everyone and ultimately makes your job easier and more enjoyable. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Mm -hmm.